Joining us now for a rare exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview, senior advisor to the president, that would be Jared Kushner. Jared, good to see you. Uh, I don't, you, you hate doing these interviews. I don't blame you. Who would ever want to come on and, and do this? Um, no, nah, it's uh, great to be with you, Sean. All right, a lot going on at the White House. Let's start with the news a little bit. we got a new AG coming in. We're awaiting an announcement for chief of staff. Uh, obviously, two years of the Mueller probe hanging over everybody's head. Still no evidence of any collusion, but... Seems like the pressure is ratcheting up. What is it like inside the White House? What can you tell us about these changes? Well, first of all, I want to start by thanking General Kelly for his great service to this administration. General Kelly has served this country for over 40 years. And over the last two years in particular, he's been very helpful to the president towards implementing a lot of the most important parts of his successful agenda. So I want to start with that. I think the president right now is going to — we just brought a new uh, White House counsel today who just started, who's going to be fabulous. Uh, the president announced his pick for attorney general, who will be quite uh, good as well, from what I'm seeing. And uh, right now in the White House, we have a lot of good people who are just working along, and the president will make the right choice for chief of staff when he's ready. And hopefully he'll choose somebody he's got great chemistry with, great relationship with, who will help him navigate the next couple of years through all of the uh, good opportunities that emerge to keep pushing forward. I'm 30 years in radio, 23 years now in, at the Fox News Channel. Uh, for example, news came out today, nobody in the news is ever going to talk about that the U.S. is now an oil exporting nation for the first time in 70 years. Add that to all the other economic success and foreign policy success, you don't hear about it. You're inside that White House. If you turn on the TV, you know what you're going to hear every second minute hour of every day. How does that impact you and the rest of the White House? Uh, I think that there's a large part of the White House that it really doesn't impact that much. You know, we know what the president wants to accomplish. He's very clear with what his objectives are. And our job is to come into work every day, focus on those goals. How do we achieve them and keep moving along? I mean, you, nobody really saw a lot of these numbers coming in terms of the oil exports and how we were going to make uh, America an energy independent country. But we've accomplished that. And that's been through a lot of great work of a lot of the cabinet secretaries, but really the leadership of the president to make that happen. So uh, again, there's a lot of stories that get a lot of attention in the news, but we have a lot of phenomenal people in the White House and in the administration who show up to work every day. Uh, ignoring the noise that's out there and just focusing on how do we accomplish the objectives of the president, which is to make our country uh, more prosperous, increase wages for people, create more jobs, and keep people safe. Okay. Let, one of the issues, you work on specific issues. I'll, I'll ask you about the Middle East. I know you've been working on those issues, but I, w I want to get into the issue of prison reform. I think one of the greatest moments in the president's history, he commutes the sentence of a woman by the name of Alice Marie Johnson. I actually had a chance to interview her. And we have this video of her after, what, 20 years in jail, one drug offense. It was serious, one but one. And she comes out, and I'll never forget what she said. She says, thank you, America. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, you won't regret giving me a second chance. And there's a big prison reform bill. And I know you're spearheading it in, in terms of the White House. I know there's been reluctance and resistance, especially Mitch McConnell in the Senate and others, my question to you is, why is that? What, what do we need to do when you have a 77 percent recidivism rate? And is that are we locking people up but not equipping them to meet the challenges when they finally get out? What do you see as the biggest problem? Right. So this bill will accomplish a lot to make our community safer. The recidivism rate that we have is way too high. And not doing anything about that is irresponsible. And we're allowing people to go back to our communities who we can help. And there's a lot of programs based in uh, red states that we've really modeled this off of. So we know that this works. And we've been able to build a very strong bipartisan coalition uh, under the president's leadership to come up with a bill that we think can really solve a lot of those problems. And what it is is going into the prisons and giving uh, job training, vocational training, uh, mentorship, uh, 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 mental health treatment, drug addiction treatment to people who are coming out who are nonviolent offenders and figuring out how, when they leave prison, they have a better chance of getting a job and reentering society in a productive manner than going back to a life of crime. Uh, these well, reforms are based on what's worked, and it'll make a big difference. And so uh, the president's built an amazing bipartisan coalition uh, of Democrats and Republicans, and we're very close right now. And hopefully this will get to the floor and we'll be able to have a big uh, bipartisan celebration Is before uh, Christmas. Violent offenders, those are people that I think you cannot let out. Those are people that got, have got to serve their term. But on the other hand, I do think that there has been 
disproportionate sentencing, especially on, for example, the crack versus powder cocaine issue. I think that's been proven over and over again. Um, is, I would love to see the president, and I don't know if this is part of the package, transform the power of the pardon. Find, put up committees, find those people that we really believe have a very low chance of recidivism, one-time offenders like Alice Marie Johnson, and find them all and let them, give them another chance with certain conditions, perhaps. Right. Well, this bill does do part of that, which is what it does is it ranks all the different inmates uh, who are in our federal prison system on their likelihood of, of, of committing a crime in the future, and then allows us to put the focus on the nonviolent people who have a low risk, like somebody like Alice Marie Johnson. In that case uh, was a grave uh, misjustice, and, and the president did a great job towards righting that wrong. Uh, that, that case really touched his heart, and that was something where he realized that there was no reason for taxpayers to be paying to house somebody like Alice when she could be out in society, being a good role model for others, and taking the mistakes that she made and figuring out how to show other people not to make those same mistakes. Look, we have a great oh. uh, criminal justice system in this country. Country. It's the best in the world, but it's still far from perfect. And this bill will do a lot to correct some racial disparities that we have in our system. Can we save uh, money? More. Can we save the taxpayers' uh, money in the process? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're putting too much money towards warehousing people who we don't need to be warehousing. That money instead should be going to law enforcement on the front lines to keep our communities safe. And if we do this right, as we've seen in a lot of these Republican states, uh, we've been able to reduce crime and also reduce cost, uh, which is why this is something that's good. And again, this is a policy that we've been able to bring a lot of very smart people together. We've got a great coalition. And the reason we've been able to do that is because it's a data-driven model and it's based on things that work and have worked before. Last question. Another area I know that you've been interested in is the Middle East. Uh, you've been on a number of trips. You've been to Jordan, Egypt, uh, Israel, Saudi Arabia. You have talked to all these people. It seems like there's a moment where there is a new alliance or coalition emerging uh, against Iranian hegemony and a potentially nuclear-armed Iran. Um, has that process been hurt as a result of the Khashoggi killing? What is the status? I know 17 individuals are being held responsible. Um, and do you feel that we will get to the bottom of it if we haven't already? Uh, I think our intelligence agencies are making their assessments, and we're hoping to make sure that there's justice brought where that should be. Uh, we're focused now on the broader region, which is... Uh, which is figuring out how to uh, hopefully bring a deal together between the Israelis and the Palestinians. That conflict has gone on for way too long. Uh, the president's been very focused on trying to bring all the different parties together. And we're hopeful in the next couple of months we'll put out our, our plan, which, again, not every side is going to love, but there's enough in it uh, and enough reasons why people should take it and move forward. And uh, this, this plan will keep the Israeli people safe, give them a good future, but also give a real opportunity and hope for the Palestinian people so that they can live much better lives. The, I've been saying a lot that uh, there you shouldn't be hijacking your children's future because of your grandparents' conflict. And this is a conflict that's been going on for way too long. And the way that people are living in Gaza and in the West Bank right now uh, is not acceptable. And there's a lot we can be doing to improve their quality of life. But it comes with resolving some of these core issues. And it's not just the Israelis that want it. It's not just the Palestinian people who want it. It's all the people I speak to throughout the entire Middle East who would like to see this issue resolved so that they can start focusing on uh, a brighter future. All right, Jared Kushner, thanks for being with us. Appreciate your time.